How do you choose a portable power station? These guys have grown tremendously in popularity over the last few years, and it seems like everybody and their dog has started a company selling these things. And I get why. They're amazing products, and they made it really easy for someone who wants power to have access to it. Whether they're just trying to power an off-grid cabin, they're trying to power their home in case of an emergency situation, they wanna power their RV, or they just wanna go camping and overlanding. Whatever your needs are, there's a unit for you. But with so many options on the market today, it's overwhelming and it's honestly just kind of daunting when it comes time to actually making a choice. My personal needs and requirements led me to this guy right here, the Jackery 1000 Plus. And hopefully by the end of this video, you guys will have a solution that actually fits your needs as well. Because when you're buying a portable power station, there's a few things that you gotta ask yourself, as well as a couple warning signs from us on things that you should definitely avoid to make sure that what you spend your hard-earned money on is worth your hard-earned money. But before we get into any of that, I'm gonna hit you guys with a super quick 60-second electricity lesson to make sure everybody's on the same page and you understand what it is that you are spending your money on. Electricity is actually very easy to understand, and the only thing that we really need to know today for this video is watts. If you picture a garden hose, like a faucet on the outside of your wall that you open and close, when you open, it allows a certain amount of pressure to flow out and through the opening. That's volts. Volts is something you don't really have to worry about because it's pretty standardized. A house has 120 or 240 volts. So volts, not super important. Amps is like the hose coming off. The more amps, the thicker the hose is. So if you have a 15 amp hose, it'll be this big and it's gonna allow the 120 volts to go through at 15 amps. A 20 amp hose is gonna be a little bit bigger and allow that to flow through much more efficiently. The water flying out the end is watts. If you were to put that into a bucket, the bigger your hose and the more your faucets opened, the more water is gonna end up in that bucket within an hour. And that's watts. And watts is a timely measurement. It's like miles or kilometers, 30 miles per hour. Watts is a per hour measurement. What I'm trying to say here is if you have a 100 watt light bulb, that means it's gonna take 100 watts per hour. If you only use it for half an hour, it's only gonna take 50 watts that hour. And the reason you need to know this is because everybody's equipment and things that they're trying to power is a little bit different. So you can't just Google like, how much power does my light take? Most fixtures will tell you the volts and the amps. If you multiply volts and amps, you get watts. So if you're gonna power a 100 watt light bulb and you get a 1000 watt battery bank, you can power that light bulb for 10 hours. And in that example, if your inverter is only 50 watts, which all inverters are way bigger than the inverters grow as the batteries grow. You probably won't run into this problem, but if that inverter was only 50 watts, it wouldn't be able to power the light bulb. It needs to be at least a 100 watt inverter. So the first thing you need to know is what are you gonna be powering and for how long? Now that you figured out how to calculate watts, this should be pretty easy for you to do. This is gonna help you determine your battery bank size, whether you need something medium, a little bit bigger, or maybe absolutely tiny. It's also gonna help you figure out your inverter size. The two things that you need to determine here is what is the total amount of power that you need and how much power do you need to be able to output at one time. And for this, I'll give you my own personal example, which landed me here at the Jackery 1000. Personally, I just wanted it to power my 45 watt Iceco 12 volt fridge. And while I do use the solar panels with this, all the time, I can't always bank on solar. So I wanted a battery bank size that would be able to last me about two and a half days, which is usually the length of time that I'm actually out camping. Super simple. Where it gets not so simple, and I hate to confuse things right away, is that a fridge is the same thing as a heater, as your air conditioner. They don't run all the time. They actually run about 40% of the time. I round up to 50 because I'd rather have a little bit extra in my math than not enough. So since a fridge only runs half the time, I took 45 watts and divided it by two since watts is an hourly measurement. So 22 and a half watts is what I use per hour powering my fridge. That times 60 hours, which is two and a half days, gets me at about 1,350 watts. Very simple. I also only needed to be running one thing at a time, which was the 45 watt fridge. But the 1350 landed me at the 1200 some odd watts that the Jackery 1000 Plus is. Now I actually find my fridge runs way less. It's a really efficient fridge. So for me, getting something with 1200 watts is plenty of power. Do that quick math, find out the total amount of things that you need to power and ideally for how long, so you can get a round measurement, and then how many are you gonna to need to power at once? The next question is, how do you plan to power the unit that you want? 
Do you plan on powering it with AC, just like the regular wall plug in your house? Or do you plan on pumping it full of solar? AC charging is simple. If you're just looking to shove some power into a unit, most units have pretty fast charging. In about under two hours, you can normally fill anything from a small to a very large portable power station. And AC charging is a great option for someone like me going camping or someone that runs a business and they're trying to keep power in their mobile trailer that they're charging equipment with and when they get home it's dark out so they just fill it with ac in the morning when they leave the trailer is full again ac is a fine option and a lot of people use portable power stations with no solar input at all if you are planning to use solar though the good news is you already understand the math a 100 watt panel produces about 100 watts an hour so it's super easy to figure out how many panels you need which seems to be the question that people are always asking if you have a 1000 watt battery like we were talking about earlier, and you have a 100 watt panel, assuming that there's proper sunlight on that panel the whole time, it's gonna take 10 hours to get 100 watts per hour into that unit until it's reached its full 1000 watts. We usually say you can count on about four good hours of sunshine per day. So let's say you have a cabin with a 3000 watt battery that you're trying to charge with solar. If you're trying to get 3000 watts into that battery in about four hours, you're gonna need 750 watts, which is really easy to achieve. You need two 400 watt panels, you need four 200 watt panels, or you need eight 100 watt panels. That's it. So at this point, you should have all of the numbers figured out. Now it's more about features than portability. How are you gonna be running the things you're running? What kind of plugs do they take? Are they stationary? Are they on the move? That kind of thing. For example, if you have a trailer or an RV or something like that, you might want to find a unit like this Anchor F2600 that has a 30 amp dedicated plug right on the front. You might want something like this that comes with wheels and even a little suitcase handle. So you can just kind of pick this thing up and drag it wherever you need to go and uh, be done with it. Because you'll learn really quick that these units get heavy really fast. If you're going to be plugging it directly into a transfer switch for a whole home backup, you might want to consider getting a unit that already has the L14 generator plug so that you don't have to, again, just have adapters and stuff going on. You can also get units like the F3800 that have 50 amp plugs on them, which is really cool if you're doing anything on a job site trying to power like a compressor or something big. You also need to determine right away, are the things you're going to be powering 120 volt or are they 240 volts? Because that will make a huge difference on the unit that you end up choosing. So think about things like this. What kind of features and stuff do you want in the unit that you want to spend your hard-earned money on? Final thing that I would say to consider before we get into what you should avoid is the price. The cheaper a unit is, the cheaper a unit is. Where this could come into a problem is a lot of units have a, for example, 3000 watt inverter with a surge capacity of 6,000, which means picture starting to ride your bike. It takes a lot more force the first few pedals, and then once you're riding, it's pretty easy. So once you're riding, you only need 3,000 watts of energy to ride, but getting going, that first five seconds takes 6,000 watts to go. And the cheaper you go, the poorer that surge capacity gets, and it tends to be the lifespan of the batteries customer support goes out the window. And if you're having trouble finding a unit in your price range, don't be afraid to go backwards. I would recommend going backwards over going on Marketplace or Craigslist, something where you don't know the history of the unit. For example, the Delta Pro is like three, maybe four years old, and it's still a great unit. And right now it's as cheap as it's ever been because the Delta Pro Ultra just launched. So EcoFlow just dropped their pants on the price of the Delta Pro. There's nothing wrong with buying a unit that's three years old when it still packs all the features that are standards today in early 2020. For. You could also try something like Jackery's Plus lineup. A lot of other companies do this, but it's a little bit harder to know which ones expand. Plus means you can add batteries to it. So I got one I could afford now. And if I need more later, I just buy an expansion battery and put it on top. It's another great way to save you money, get a unit with the features that you need at the most entry level price point, and then just start stacking expansion batteries on it as you need them or as you can afford them into the future. And finally, there's just a couple things that we would recommend you look out for when you actually go to purchase a solar generator, starting with companies that don't exist or haven't existed for that long, like this one, for example. This is a Gulu Amazon generator. It might work great, uh, but there's no telling for how long or how well it'll actually work, what the customer service is like, anything. There's, you don't know anything about this. Try to avoid that. Try to find a company that's been around for a while, has some decent reviews. A lot of companies say they offer a 10-year warranty. That's great. A 10-year warranty from a company that's been around for six months means absolutely nothing. Be careful buying from a company that nobody knows what they are. Do not trust 
any solar generators website on how long something will last. They tend to overinflate their numbers and underestimate how much power you're actually, why is this still on the table? Even a big names like EcoFlow, they will tell you their products will power your house for a week. When in reality, if you look at it and you think, okay, the average US house uses 30 kilowatts of power a day, uh, there's absolutely no way that this is getting me more than three days. Don't buy based on the numbers that they're giving you on the website, buy based on the math that we taught you earlier in this video. And I think most importantly, once you find a unit that you think you want, just watch a ton of YouTube videos on it. Honestly, there should be YouTube videos on these products and you should be able to find a handful of them, enough to get kind of everybody's well-rounded opinion. Try to steer away from ones that seem sponsored. Here at the lab, we don't take money to make videos. All the videos that we make are our honest opinion, but we're also relatively new, so we don't have a ton of videos on a ton of products for you guys to reference. So when you're out there, just be, be careful of anything that includes paid promotions or uh, is seeming obviously like it's only sunshine and rainbows and there's no negatives. Try to find some of the videos with the negatives. Try to, you know what I mean? Get an honest feel for what it is that you're looking at. So hey, hopefully that helps. We've listed some of our favorite companies for you guys to check out in the description below. We also designed an entire quiz that we're gonna be launching, hopefully by the time this video comes out, if not very soon after that you guys can take and it will spit out a recommendation for you based on the questions you answered. It's like a 60 second quiz, takes no time and takes you right to a unit that we recommend for you, not one that someone's being paid to tell you to buy. So that is all I got for you guys. Make a smart decision, get some portable power, just have a damn good year this year. That's all. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thank you guys so much for watching. Peace out and stay charged.